Hi everybody, welcome back. So, uh, so far we haven't done a great deal in Studio other than learn how to move around and look at our windows. So let's start adding something into Studio to make it a bit more interesting. So if you can move your camera down, if you didn't in the last video, so you're just pointing down at the floor. The first thing that we're going to add into our world is a spawn point, all right? And to do that, we click on Model tab up the top, and over here underneath the Gameplay section on the right, click on this little sun-looking symbol, and we will get a spawn point. So I'll just move back a little bit. Now, a spawn point is a special Roblox Studio uh, part that when you play your game, this is where the character will appear and the reason I'm doing putting this in is because we're going to put some things in here and when you do test things you want to be able to see them so for example if I was to move up here and be looking off into the distance without the spawn point here and I clicked on the part up the top here under model see how it puts it uh, a fair distance away or if I tip it up even further and do it again there it is off in the distance all right so we sort of don't want that to happen where um, because you'll get lost or you won't be able to find these things or it makes it more difficult so I'll just hit control Z to undo those things there now with your spawn point um, before we move on to parts we want to know which way this is facing so if we click on spawn location which is in the Explorer window down the bottom underneath properties if we scroll right down to the bottom you'll notice that we have a couple of things here called surface and surface inputs so click on surface and down here we'll say front surface so all we need to do is just click on where it says smooth and you'll notice a yellow bar appears on this side this indicates that this is the front all right and if we look up here so that we're at the back and I'll move my camera back this is now the front so when we spawn our character will be facing towards the front edge and whatever we put here should appear right in front of us and that way we won't get lost all right uh, that's a handy thing to know when you're orientating things in studio. So we don't need to change anything, we just need to know which way it's facing. All right, so now that we have that, let's move our camera down just in front of our spawn point here. And we're going to add a part like I did just before. So up the top, you'll notice there's a drop down underneath it and it gives us a variety of things to choose from. However, we'll just work with the block part for a start and simply click on it to add it into our main window. Now, it's highlighted with blue lines around it at the moment, and you'll see that it has appeared in the workspace, and its name is part. So, however, if I add in uh, a sphere or a wedge or whatever it might be in here, you'll notice that the sphere in particular has the name part also and wedge gets its own name and down the bottom cylinder also gets called part all right this can get confusing so we need to make sure that we name our parts correctly so I'll just use command Z to get rid of all of the ones we added in after and we just have part in here all right so for now we'll just call this my part not very interesting but we're not doing anything particularly exciting with it other than learning how to work with it so parts are measured in Roblox using studs and that is what these things are on the bottom here so with my part selected come back over to our properties window and if we look down under here to part we'll see the size if 
we click on this, x for y1, z2. So if you're not sure about this, just click on this up the top here, and you'll notice x is running across this way, z is running this way, and y is up and down. So we have a little look at uh, this here. We'll see that x is one, two, three, four studs wide. Of course, uh, we have two studs backwards and one stud high. All right, so that's how things are measured. Now, when we move or resize these things, if you look up the top here, we have a snap to grid section, moving one stud at a time. Now you can change this or you can turn it off altogether. When we move things, however, it will move them one stud. So let's have a look at moving our block for a start. So with it selected, so you can either click on it here, so it's blue, or over here in the workspace. So you'll notice that if I click off it, it doesn't have the blue part. I click on it, it does. Come over to our tools and we'll click on the move tool and we have these arrows appear. And it's quite clear that uh, these will move it this way. So left clicking and holding on an arrow, you'll notice it moves one stud at a time to the right or left. If I hit the green arrow, left click and hold and drag up one stud at a time. And of course the blue arrow one stud at a time, forward or backwards. You can change this up the top, so if I unclick move, you'll now notice that it will smoothly slide left or right, up or down. All right, forward or back, etc. You can also change this to be, say, four studs at a time that you want it to move. So when you drag it, it will move four studs. All right, so that's moving, and we'll just set this back to one. Let's have a look at scale. So with our part selected, we have these little balls or spheres that appear, same colors. Now, when you click on these and drag and hold, so left click and hold, we move the part or stretch the part out this way, scaling it, one stud, all right, left, forward or backwards and green will move us up or down. Alright, and we can have a look at our part. There it is. Alright, so that is scaling or resizing parts and you can of course use it to do lots of things. So we could call that a wall or perhaps if we flattened it down like this we could call that a tabletop and you may want to make it thinner, etc., for a tabletop. Right, so let's now look at rotate. If we click on this, we get these bands that uh, surround our part. Now, this works similar to move, and you'll see rotate 45 degrees up the top here. So if I click on this blue one, notice the line that appears in the center and the sections. This is how far it's going to rotate. So if I drag, see how it's put another line and it showed, well, you've dragged that 45 degrees. So if I do it again and again and again, it'll continue to go around like a clock, rotating the part around. And that works on any of these axes. So And of course, you can change the degrees up the top here to reflect that. So if you wanted a perfect turn of 90 degrees, it will do that. All right, so they are the three tools, or the three main tools that we'll be using. Transform, we probably won't use in this course. However, these three will serve us well to build and use things in here. So let's just move this up a bit. Now, you can use this now to move your camera around so you've got something to look at, which is a bit easier if you want to look up the top or move down. Practice using your camera. 
All right. The one last thing that I did want to say is, say we were over here, a long way away, and we wanted to say, oh, I want to look at this part, and I don't want to use my camera to get there because it's tricky. You can hit the F key, all right, which brings it into focus. So no matter where I am, if I select a part, so even if I clicked off it here and I say, oh, I need to look at this part, click on it in the workspace, hit the F key, and it will bring it into focus. All right? So that, uh, by all means, have a play with this and add some other parts and resize them and rotate them and scale them uh, and build something if you like. And uh, we will come back in the next video and we're going to start looking at the part properties over here to make our parts a little bit more interesting and so that they're, um, we can start using them in code very shortly uh, to make things happen. Alright, so I'll see you in the next video, but uh, yeah, have a play with that and uh, we'll see you soon.